Let's talk about Markov Decision Processes, or MDPs. So an MDP is meant to capture uh, the state of the world and how you know an agent um, behaves, well, not behaves in it, but how an agent gets rewards in that world. Uh, so let's say, you know, we start with the circle, we say this is S1. So S1 is a state of the world, uh, which includes the agent in it. So for example, if, if your world is a two-dimensional uh, maze with a robot in it, the state of the world might be, would be where the agent is in that maze, his particular specific location, and then, you know, maybe um, the heading uh, of the agent. Or, you know, if there's some other stuff in the world, you have to add it in. So it needs to capture everything that's important about the world. And so in each state, the agent might get a reward. And so let's say the agent gets zero. In state as one, then let's say he can, if he takes action A, uh, which is, say, move north for a robot or something, uh, he ends up in a state as two. He gets, again, a reward of zero. And uh, he goes back here. So he takes A again, he ends up in state S3, and uh, say now finally he gets a reward of 5. So this is, a, this is an MDP, right? We're getting there. Uh, another thing that you can have in an MDP is, uh, so right here, you know, in S1, we take action A, we definitely end up in S2. You can say, well, you know, really most of the time, or 90% of the time, he ends up in S2, but uh, we're going to say that... Uh, uh, you know, with 0.1 or 10% of the time in S1, he ends up, and he takes action A in S1, he ends up and in S4, he gets again zero. Uh, and so we can do that. We can have probabilities associated with the actions. Now, the thing is, of course, uh, these have to add up to one, right? So if you are in, in any state, you take for any action, uh, you know, you have to have arrows coming out of it uh, whose probabilities add up to one, 0.9 plus 0.1 one uh, and of course you can take different actions so let's say he takes another action b from that same state uh, probably to point eight he ends up at uh, it's five where he gets a reward of two uh, there you go da, da, da. and then we're gonna need a point two probability uh, and let's say b is probably point two he stays at the same state you know that's fine you can have circles uh, you can add more stuff here. So let's say he takes A here, he definitely ends up as four, that kind of stuff. And you know, this is not finished, but so you get the idea. Basically, an, an MDP is going to be consist of these states of the world, these rewards, and these actions, and the transition. Um, now, the way we would represent this, so this is a nice picture, is a nice, I think, intuitive view of the whole thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, when you're Writing a paper, you know, you need to use, you know, represent this using more succinct notation or when you're writing a program. And we will use a transition function. So we say t of s of a prime is some probability. Uh, so that is a transition function. Basically, it's just a table of s, a, another s, and then the p. So, and uh, you know, let me just do this, a couple of these. So if you are in state S1 and we take action A, then with probability 0.9, we end up at S2, right? If we are in S1 and we take action A with probability 0.1, we're going to end up at S4. That's, that's a 4 right there. Uh, if we're in S1, we take action uh, B with probability 0.8. Eight window at uh, S five. That way, you also have to add all the zeros too to have your table uh, completed. Oh, I messed these up. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I'm putting the probabilities here and the states here. Um, so if your state as one, you take action A. You know, with probability zero, you end up at say S three because you gotta have all the s primes there too so a lot of these probabilities will be zero and normally yes you would put the probability at the end uh but yeah you can see this is just one big humongous table in most you know 
in any, even a toy application, the set of states really explodes. So a lot of the programming and that you need to do if you're going to use these to actually represent something is uh, you need to find, find ways of limiting and reducing the set of states to something more manageable that's only in the millions, not in the uh, trillions. Because um, you can imagine, you know, for example, if you have a two-dimensional grid, uh, right, that uh, you have one, just one guy in a two-dimensional grid, and that's n by n, well, that right there is n square states. If you have two guys now, then is n squared times n squared. And then if you have three guys, n squared times n squared times n squared. So the more agents you have, the explodes really fast. Okay, so these are transitions probabilities that represent most of it. You also have these, you know, the rewards. So you'll have a R of S function, which is just a number. Um, and uh, that is going to give you the reward. So between these two and the set of states and the set of actions, you have defined uh, your MDP. So that is, these are what define the whole MDP, you know, the whole picture of it. Okay, so uh, in a minute, I'm going to erase this and uh, let's talk about uh, utility. So I showed you this just now. And um, so you get zero here, zero here, and five here. And uh, he was getting one down here. So the, the question is, so these are the rewards, which are like utilities. But you know, the question is, what is, said as one, what is the utility of state as one? Or let's say two, three, four. So what is the utility of S4? It seems, you know, this one seems very clear for S4 is one because you get a reward of one. But, you know, if uh, I don't know, if you had this, like you take action A, keep getting a reward of one, 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 one. That, that seems more than one, right? Uh, meanwhile, um, or, uh, but let's say you don't have that. So in that case, it's just going to be one. Uh, but then we're back here. And let's say now, try to figure out what's the utility of state S1. Um, well, in S1, I'm getting zero. So is that the utility of S1? But, you know, if I am here and I just took action A, uh, I could uh, I could right away end up here and get one. Or I could take BB and get five. So it doesn't seem right to say that the utility of S1 is zero, right? Because Yes, right now I'm getting zero, but uh, you know I'm just right next to uh, the possibility of getting one or five. So how do we uh, how do we set the utility of S one? Well, basically, you know, we're saying that yeah, I mean, if if you know this reward is uh, if you don't care about the future, right? If you're not gonna take any more action, you know, your agent's gonna die right here. Then yeah, the utility of that is zero because you're never gonna see that. But if you do plan to take another action, and uh, and you do you know value uh, future earnings somewhat, uh, then uh, yeah, this is not so bad. So what we're gonna use is uh, we use this gamma. Uh, we call this the discount factor of uh, rewards. So we're gonna say that you know a reward now. So if I get the reward now, it's worth, you know, R. If I get a reward of R now, let's say zero or, I'm oh, sorry, one, then this is worth one to me. But a reward of R, you know, the next time step, so we're going to use discrete time. Uh, so at time t plus one, if I get a reward, R is worth gamma times R. So gamma is going to be a number, you know, between zero and one. Right? So this is going to be less than one. If I get a reward uh, two time steps away, so this is one time step in the future, two time steps in the future is going to be gamma squared times r, so and then cubed. So for example, let's say gamma is 0.9, so and the reward is uh, 5. So if I get a reward of 5 now, that's worth 5 to me. Uh, if I get uh, a reward of 5 next time, uh, that's going to be 
0.9 times 5. And if I get it after that, it's going to be 0.9 squared, which is 0.81 is 5. Right? And so you can see, you know, and I put this plus signs here because you can see that this is sort of uh, telling me that, you know, if, if I know I'm in the state right now where I get 5 and then I can take an action that's going to give me 5 after that, and then I can take an action that's going to give me 5 again after that. So, you know, something like this. Uh, uh, then, you know, I know that the utility for this particular state, I can say now, if I'm a utility, I can say the utility for this state is 5 now, plus 0.95, plus, and plus yada, 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 up to infinity. You know, this number, of course, you know, as you know, it keeps getting smaller and smaller, so this is going to converge, I think. Uh, and uh, that will give us the utility of this state, right? So that's how we change from these rewards values, reward to utility. And, uh, okay, so to, you know, come right around and uh, finish this off, uh, we can say then that, you know, once we have a total definition of our problem, uh, change colors here, we can say that the utility of every state, right, uh, different from the reward, is going to be the reward I get in that state plus gamma times uh, the maximum action, uh, the best action I can take, and then I'm going to add up over all S states, S prime, uh, the probability that I can go from S, given that I'm in S, I take action A, end up in S prime, times the utility of that S prime. So this is how we define, this, this is a recursive definition, uh, and it, this is how we, def we can define the utility of every state. So the utility of every state is the reward I get in that state plus gamma times. And then the tricky part is I have to consider if I am in that state, let's say I'm in state S1, uh, I can take either actions A or B, right? So I can take either A or B. So I'm doing this max. So if I take A, uh, let's say I take action A, I end up at S4, right? And uh, with probability one. So the, uh, the T, T of S, T of S1 of A, S4, you know, that's 1. Um, and then the utility I get for its state S4, well, I don't know what that is uh, right now because all I have is the reward. <laughs> but if you think about it, you know, you see, well, there's no way out of S4, and uh, the utility of S is R of S plus this, but, you know, since there's no way out of it. Out of S4, this whole thing is going to be zero. So the utility of S4 is just the reward of S4, which is one. So that's one. So it's going to be one times one, uh, which is one. And so if I S1, the this whole thing here, this whole sum evaluates to one. If I am in S1 and I take B, the similar thing this goes over here. And now that's a little bit harder because now I have to calculate this utility, and in this case, the utility of this guy you know, is going to depend on that. So, uh, and you can see that it's going to be a little bit tricky to calculate because we have this recursive definition of U of S, right, and which depends on U of S. It's going to be a bit uh, uh, tricky to solve this and find all the U of S's. And uh, so we'll talk about that on the next lecture.